Hello. Hello everyone. Hello. Hey Mama, how are you? I'm just waiting for uh Carola to join us so guys do you do you hear my voice is it fine thank you Mohammed so is everything okay with my voice hello okay thank you um, just waiting for Carola to join us. Thank you. Thanks. Hello. English maximizer. Oh, hello. Hello. Just waiting for Carola to join us. So, guys, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, teaching communicatively. Now, uh, for you guys that are teachers, you most uh, probably know what that means. It basically means to uh, teach in a way that uh, the students can communicate uh, easily in an English-speaking context. So that's what we're going to talk about, but I'm just waiting for our dear Argentinian friend uh, because we're going to do this live with her today and uh, she's quite experienced and uh, she's been teaching and doing research on English teaching uh, comprehensively so uh, today uh, we're going to focus on talking with her about this topic I'm just going to try to text her maybe she can join us faster Okay, uh, she's here. Okay, so I'm just okay. Hello, oh. hello, oh. how are you? Good, and you? Ah, thank you. Not bad, not bad. Is everything okay over there? Yes, it's great. It's kind of rainy, but it's okay. I can cope with rain. Ah, okay. And it, it has to be quite cold as well, yeah? Yes, we're just starting. We're going to start winter very soon, very soon. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, but it's boiling hot over here, you know? It's just <laughs> just like exploding. Uh, so uh, thank you for uh, accepting my uh, offer for this live. I have to put that out, first of all. But... Um, I was just uh, explaining to uh, our viewers that we're going to talk about uh, communicative English teaching and uh, how it happens. But uh, before we start talking, I just wanted to uh, set the context for everyone uh, because uh, we had this uh, video chat uh, a week ago, I guess. And, uh, uh, and while talking with each other, we, we got to this at this point where our experiences were quite similar to each other. So um, as uh, we had the same problem at school teaching, you know, young learners and um, people that are not willing to learn English, English that much, we decided to do this on uh, teaching English communicatively. 
So, uh, Carola, do you mind uh, introducing yourself, first of all? Okay, sure. I am yeah. a teacher of English in Argentina. I have one group in high school. They are almost finishing high school, about 16 years old. And then I teach technical English at college for like English for specific purposes. And also I, I'm, I'm the teacher of um, pedagogy and uh, practice and stuff like that in a teacher education program that is uh, four years long. I teach three years, the same student for three years. So they kind of, I hope they learn a lot in three years. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they surely will because you're, you have to be a great teacher. And um, I've just uh, followed your page uh, so much because you, you have a lot of great live sessions with great people. And uh, I know the one that I was quite interested in was the one that I told you was with uh, Scott Thornbury. Uh, well, yeah, that was, that was just fantastic. That was it, just it, fantastic. I couldn't, believe, I couldn't believe it when he said yes. I, 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 my first uh, step is to find an email address online and write a message, explain short, but uh, powerful. So they accept the invite. And he was so willing to accept. I couldn't believe it. And then I, well, I, I also talked to Penny Uhr, that is also a, a well-known specialist. Yeah. And I yeah, have a yeah, yeah. Saturday the 27th, I'm speaking to Jeremy Harmer also. Oh my God, really? <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Can't yeah, th these are these are such huge names, you know. I when I was doing uh, the Delta just recently, it was just like um, when, when you take a look at the books that are available and the famous books out there, you just see their names everywhere, you know, that, like they're everywhere. So yeah, it, it, kudos to you and uh, keep on doing that because you know the ELT community just appreciates it so much and thank you for all the energy you put into this. Okay, so um, yeah, just fantastic job. So uh, first of all, let, let's uh, start with this question. What is teaching communicatively? What does it mean if we wanna put out a, a definition of sorts? Well, this is a very good question because uh, as well, Harmer says this in a video where he talks to Scott that teachers usually define themselves as communicative teachers, but uh, in fact, because CLT is not a method but a set of principles, like Richard says that it's a set of principles, it doesn't say how to teach, and this is a problem because people expecting to be given recipes or activities or things to apply in the class, they don't find it in CLT. It's more like a, a it's how you see teaching and not what to do. Mm -hmm. and exactly. It's a set of principles. It's a, it's a kind of toolbox to decide what to teach and how to do it. Yeah, and uh, nothing is actually pre-planned, yeah? So you actually choose the materials based on the needs of your students. But do you think that's a good thing? Well, uh, I wouldn't say it's not pre-planned because it, it, because it, it, it's all up to you, eventually, like CLT is, um, I would say it's, um, it's about deciding what to teach and how to teach depending on the students you have. But whether you plan or not, there'll be a different thing, like more no planning and no material control will be more like dogma, like Scott's. Yeah, idea. yeah. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Like that sometimes, like, I don't know, we have, for example, in a school year, we usually have about 30 weeks total in the whole year. So I, I would say, let's say five or 10 of those weeks should be like more like uh, no planning or more spontaneous or more whatever comes in the class. But the other lessons need to be planned. I, I, I tell my students to teach grammar communicatively and teaching grammar communicatively requires a plan. So we do plan and we also do spontaneous and variety matters a lot. You. Okay, but um, you know, the, this, this brings me to this question, what you said. Um, do you use a, a textbook for CLT? And how does it work? Because, uh, you know, as you said, it's a set of, uh, you know, things, techniques, uh, or, you know, stuff you can do in the classroom. But um, do we have any, um, can we use any textbooks for CLT? Okay, you put me in a, in a hard place. I, my, <laughs> I do believe that you need to use textbooks in language schools or if you get students like at the beginning, I would use a book. But when 
uh, after let's say my students come to me after four or five years and they haven't like learned exactly to do things with the language they haven't developed skills so if i go on with the book in the unit i have to deal with like and my my case would be past continuous present perfect some conditionals and they're not ready for that so i can't go on using the book because it's not suitable for them i do believe the book is okay but i also believe that it depends on the students mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. using I, i think that when you decide to use a textbook it's great to, to 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 exploit it and to understand this is something i include in the final exams in my subject one part of the final exam is more theory of course and the other part is like uh, to i show them a page of a textbook and they have to tell me the, the the theory behind it they need to prove that they understand what each activity is for because textbooks are designed by experts they are serious stuff and they take things seriously and they are usually very good and if you learn how mm -hmm. to read that and what is what the aim of each activity is it's good because sometimes for example at the end of a you know the presentation you have like a, a dialogue or a text that be exposing students to the language that's what we call in my subject global presentation you deal with the text as um, as a text reading or listening because it's exposure you isolate the teaching point from that context you deal with all the grammar explanation auxiliaries blah 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 you do some control practice and eventually the final production should mirror presentation so if you present a dialogue they should produce some kind of dialogue and because they don't understand what that is for they skip it they say oh no too noisy too whatever and that's a, that's the most important part of the unit you can't skip the, the the final part so they devote too long to the grammar part and they skip the the big, the big one so that's what i tell them okay. if you use the book use it well mhm mm mhm mm Yeah, because a lot of the teachers actually don't do that, you know. And after a couple of years, unfortunately, teachers become uh, kind of, uh, let's say, automatic. They, they don't prepare as much as they did. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that's one of the, I, I believe that's one of the biggest problems. Because, um, you know, uh, one of the differences of CLT with uh, its previous, uh, let's say, methodologies or strategies or anything, was that uh, the role of the teacher actually changes from the all-knowing person to the facilitator. So, uh, but unfortunately, in the classes that I've, uh, I've visited and I've observed in Iran, um, I, I can see that, uh, you know, as the teacher becomes more uh, experienced, they, they, they just uh, lose touch of the reality of being a teacher. And that is, first of all, being a learner yourself. Yeah. So um, I, I guess that, that happens a lot, especially when it gets to, um, you know, CLT. But um, let, me, let me ask you this. Uh, the subject of the live is uh, about uh, communicative language teaching. Uh, so how you can uh, manage your class uh, communicatively. Um, So my question is this, can you, can you walk us through um, what you do, basically, okay. for a, a communicative class, before it, while you do it, after it, whatever? In well, the course, I, I think you probably want to know about my, my secondary school experience, because that's where I teach the language. Yes. In the others, I do something. Yes. Well, I yes, don't yes, do definitely. There's no textbook. I do create a kind of a handbook with things I do because there is printed material. I choose uh, some dialogue, some texts to deal with, but I go in the order as, 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 as necessary. And I would see myself, I do believe we are facilitators. I agree with that, but I consider myself a, a resource in the classroom because they are not exposed to English outside. We don't have any English in this town and most of them don't listen to music or watch movies in English. So because I am the, the one who brings the English to the classroom, I do a lot of story storytelling, but instead of narrating stories as such, I tell them stories about myself. I, for example, I, I, I tell them about a trip, a journey, and uh, I describe everything like the, the journey itself, you know, accommodation, stuff I did. And I speak English with pictures and they listen and then I assess listening comprehension. Of course, there's a lot of visual aid, but they are beginners and they don't understand English. And they manage to understand me with gesture and stuff. And so I do some tests. The, the test is based on the content of the talk. 
English is a means to an end, and that is also CLT. Forget mm -hmm. the language, do something with the language. The language will mm -hmm. be learned. The theory behind this, this one of the things I do that is telling them about my trips. For example, you know, I don't know if you know, if you're familiar with Stephen Krashen's five hypotheses. Yeah. Well, yeah. Two of the hypotheses that are big thing. One is that you only learn the language when you are exposed to comprehensible input. That's comprehensible input. And if the affective filter is low, and that's low because it's not an exam, they 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 are more worried about remembering the day when I went or the name of the hotel or the name of the museum I visited. And the language magically happens there because my 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 story is in English and the test is in English and the answers are in English. And they managed to do that. We also do the test like with a game. So I tell them the story and then we play a game based on what I said. For example, uh, Kahoot or Pleakers or stuff like that, like maybe digital or also games like physical. I roll a dice and they get a number and depending on the number, there's a question. And if they answer the question, they get a point or not. So that'll be one thing I do. Um, something else would be, we read texts, very carefully chosen, like, uh, again, comprehensible input about topics that they, are, they might be interested in. Some are printed in the handbook and some I choose as we go after they, for example, in Argentina, we have a tradition big thing for the students at this age, that they design a senior jacket that represents the class and they all wear the same jacket and it's like sense of belonging. And there are lots of texts explaining because that, that tradition is also typical, typical in America. And so we read texts about that and they like it because it's like the most important thing that is happening to them in that course is the jacket. So let's talk about mm -hmm. the jacket, why not? And um, we, I also f I do a lot of a lot about uh, vocabulary. I hope I'm more interested in them remembering keywords and not grammar structures. I don't care if they put the verb in the past or the present or the future. If they say yesterday, people know we are talking about the past. So we can sacrifice mm -hmm. tenses, mm -hmm. the, the verb and the keywords. If I say yesterday, I go to the park, you know what I say. It's okay. I, I teach the past. It's there. We talk about it, but it's not part of my main goals. I don't assess the past as such. Okay. So, so what you're saying is that communication is at the heart of this. Yes. So definitely. being able to, to, to put a message through. Yeah. And we talk about ourselves. I tell them stories. They tell me their own stories. I help them say things in English. Like, I, I don't know if you saw my live stream with Mark Prensky. He's not yeah. a specialist, but they help too. And mm -hmm. he said that it would be great to ask people, what, would you, what do you talk about in your mother tongue? Okay, let's say that in English. What would you like to talk about? Let's say that in English. And not impose topics like, uh, for example, uh, telling the time. It's something I, I, I don't understand because when you say like quarter past, half past, we don't talk like that. We don't speak like that in Spanish. And... If you need to know the time, you look at the at the phone. It's not even relevant to ask. It's not that important to talk about the time and telling the time and stuff like that. So I don't teach that. Mm, I don't think it's useful for the students. They, okay, they, yeah, they, yeah. It, 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 it is quite dependent on, on the context, as you say. Yeah, so uh, maybe maybe some, some other place they, they would do that based on the context. The same as, for example, giving directions, like turn right, turn left. You know, we have Google Maps, we have very good apps. If you need to go somewhere, you probably don't ask people. Not that, not, not, it's not necessary. And my students here, they don't know the tongue. They are, they can't uh, think in Spanish, they can't do it. They don't know where and how to tell you to go. So it's too much for them. Mm -hmm. probably, mm -hmm. probably too much. Okay, okay. But um, that takes me to uh, another question. And, um, uh, it's this. Um, do we have any like uh, percentage, any any balance between the skills? So when we're, when we're talking about CLT, and as you mentioned, that we we uh, mostly speak in CLT. Um, what about uh, you know receptive skills? What about writing? So can you talk about that? Yes. I when we learn this, I tell my students that there are no there aren't four skills. There, there are five or seven or more, depending on, on what you want to deal with. 
you know, education is more comprehensive nowadays. It's not just teaching your subject, but, you know, the person and the four pillars of education and all that. So um, the, the traditional skills would be the four we all know plus viewing. I consider viewing a skill itself. Like uh, I'm speaking to yeah. Judy Harris, the, the person who popularized the idea of TPAC. And she says that uh, it's viewing is a skill and it should be considered as such. And it's a special skill. And that's the one that should come first. In my opinion, this is my opinion, no theory behind this, because students are exposed to videos a lot. So bringing a video in English, it's coming closer to the, 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 the kids, the, their, their habits, their routines. The video also has stuff that is more than the language, so they can, it's more multi-literacies. Mm -hmm. And um, viewing, viewing and doing things from the video, that's good. And then I think that Listening and reading, because it's comprehensible input, it's input should come first. We should expose students to listen to me, to classmates, to somebody. It doesn't matter who. Listen to English. In, in a way, it, listen to something they can understand. Don't put a movie and cover the subtitles. It's too much for them. And uh, reading too, if it depends on the students, because if you expose them to reading too soon, they learn pronunciation in the wrong way because they want to say things the way they read, and it's not like that. So careful with reading. Speaking is necessary, definitely. In fact, when you ask a person if they know the language, you say, do you speak English? You don't say, do you write English or do you listen English? You, you speak English. So speaking is the proof of knowing the language. And I would postpone writing in, in my context as much as possible they wouldn't be writing in english in real life so because they they are beginners and they it's like beginners beginners i can't deal with that you know writing sentences to fix grammar that's not writing it's not a skill that is writing and that's grammar practice so when i when yeah, I say yeah exactly composing a text to communicate something that's too much for beginners in in mm -hmm. In a language mm -hmm. school, when you train them for international exams, that's something else. It's two worlds apart. The, 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 the international exams, it's one way of teaching. And English in compulsory education, nobody wants to learn. That's a different... A diff it's, they, they dislike it even more if you focus on that. Who wants to write a composition in English in high school, compulsory high school? Yeah, but um, yeah, yeah, you, you're completely right. But uh, don't you think that, uh, you know, with the advent of uh, Web2 services like Instagram, like uh, YouTube or, or these things, and, you know, uh, the, the fact that we're seeing the emergence of, you know, um, you know the, the differences between the cultures are, are just um, being destroyed these days, you know, because everyone is um, going to uh, experience another culture in, in quite a new way. So don't you think that knowing how to write, for example, comments these days is one of the necessities for even high school students? Because, um, you, you know, because you're seeing that the, the effect of Instagram on people's lives all around the world is, is just uh, so much. So what do you think about that? Wow, great. Those students who would probably engage in writing comments, they already know how to do that because they are exposed to English, they follow people and they, they would probably write well. You can also use Google Translate. It doesn't really, if you write simple and, and clear in your own language, the mistakes are very few. I'm doing some research now and the mistakes are so few that communication happens even with Google Translate. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I don't imagine my students texting in English. It's not because my students don't do that. Okay, and those who do, they learn on their own. They don't need us. So um, my students see me once a week, some weeks, because we have strikes and rainy days and lots of things. And uh, I wouldn't prioritize writing. I do believe it's necessary. Okay. It's more like a dream okay. Come In the very few <laughs> lessons I have, I, I think it's about oral communication a lot and vocabulary. Now, somebody asked in the chat when we start English in Argentina, Compulsory education usually um, includes six years uh, in high school. That would be at the age of about 12, 11, 12 to 17, 18. It's three school, three school, three periods at a week, 40 minute periods a week, two hours a week for six years or three years, depending on the school. 
some uh, elementary schools include English, but it's more like depending on the school. It's not part of the law. The legal system by law says six years, usually. Okay. Okay. That's, uh, that's uh, the same happens uh, more or less in Iran as well. Uh, but it depends on the school. So we have bilingual schools, we have international schools. It, it's, uh, it's quite similar to what you said. Um, but um, let, me, let me ask you this. Uh, if you, uh, um, and I don't want you to refer to any like research or anything by any other people. I, I just want to know your honest opinion based on your experience. So if, if you have any criticism towards CLT, what would it be? Um, wow. See, the, the thing is that CLT is not something in concrete. It's, a, as I said, a set of principle. It's a view. Yes. Of yeah. so, well, you know, it's, it's exactly like dogma. So, uh, you know, I, I did dogma for my experimental practice uh, during Delta Module 2, and um, I loved it. You know, I, uh, at the beginning, I, I didn't know what I was doing in the classroom, but uh, I, I just uh, watched uh, this video uh, of, uh, of Scott's on, on uh, YouTube. Uh, I, I think it was with uh, Jeremy Harmer. Uh, you know, they're, they're talking about dogma and um, it, the spirit of, uh, of what they uh, talked about was, uh, was just magnificent, you know. But uh, different people have different experiences. And uh, for me, as a teacher that had, like, uh, you know, a good uh, ability in speaking English and handling the class, it was, it was just amazing. But um, some people would definitely hate it. Definitely. Uh, but, um, it's yeah. Time but... Consuming. It's time-consuming. Yeah, yeah. In creative, innovative classes every single for every single lesson. So, of course, it's easier to stick to a textbook. And I respect that. It's like, okay, deal with the textbook. When you finish a unit, do something different after that. One day, two days, three lessons, something, a mini sequence based on skills or on oral communication or something different, completely different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but if, if we want to talk about CLT, what do you think? So what, what would the criticism be towards CLT? I don't find criticism because it's, misinterpretation because it's not a method so don't expect to be told what to do it's not a method it's a set of principle it's it's like a pair of glasses to see things through not a tool to do uh, it's to see and to understand it's a, like a paradigm and uh, i'm not sure they, they they don't say don't teach grammar clt doesn't say don't teach grammar you decide to teach some grammar because you believe it's necessary that's a principle because your students need to say something to do something to whatever for example in in, my, in this town it's kind of touristic it's possible that you get a job in a restaurant hotel clothes store and you might need to deal with somebody speaking english so that's what i focus on some of my students have have uh, been in, uh, I don't know, working in a bar and somebody speaking English approaches them and at least manage and give them what they want. So that's what we should focus on. That, that's my situation. My students, because they, they get summer jobs, not all students get summer jobs, they do because they, they need the money. And, uh, mm -hmm. and that's something they haven't done before also because if every teacher does the same, again, not, not relevant. You can't be learning. Mm -hmm for four years to to be a receptionist in out out that's something you did you do once well i feel i'm the one who can do that in that year and then they go on with the grammar before and after uh, scott said it in the live stream um all students are communicators not all students are grammar learners and you need to respect that mm -hmm. they are forced my students are forced to study english in compulsory education i'm not speaking about language schools when they choose to study the language as such to pass exams like Cambridge examinations or similar. My students don't choose that <laughs> at all. They don't even like it. So let's do something useful. And when you ask them, have you ever heard someone speaking English in the town? Yes, where? Bars, Corsodromo, we have like uh, touristic places. Uh, well, let's learn that. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, wh what do you do about uh, students that are not interested in the class? Well, I, I don't think that you can motivate everybody because we're all different and 
we should respect that some students don't like English and they will not. For example, I don't like beer and people should respect me for that, not making me want to like it. I just don't like beer and it's okay. All my friends drink beer and it's a, like a discussion we have and they, they, they try to oh, test, test this one. This one is good and this one, no, I don't like it. Respect me. So, well, it's okay. If, even if they don't like English, you can teach them something else through English values. For example, learning to read whatever language, reading comprehension as such, that's a must, that's non-negotiable. If you don't read, I don't care if you don't like it. If you don't learn to read as a citizen, you are in trouble. Okay, so I use English as an excuse to teach you reading strategies in general, like, you know, paratextual information and summarize uh, stuff like that. At least that's what you learn from my class. And that's, that's, that's a must. Some things are non-negotiable, like literacy. You need to, to, to read and write at least in Spanish. So I teach them reading strategies that they can apply to Spanish too. We do the things in English because I tell them you have to pass my exams, <laughs> but it's okay if you don't like it. I respect them. I try hard, but I don't believe I can't motivate 30 students that are forced to study English because they are 16 years old and accidentally are in the same class. They are not even friends. So, uh, mm. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I totally understand. You're you're not supposed to just put everyone in line, especially in the context of a school. Uh, that 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 happens a lot. Uh, you know, as as we talked about it before, uh, not everyone just likes to be there. So so that's that's the major problem when it gets to when it gets yeah. to schools. I usually tell them there are some rules, like okay, studying, trying to pass some of the exams coming to class, some, some, some rules are necessary. And then the rest is up to them. Yeah, yeah, completely. So um, just um, uh, at the end, I just want to go through some activities mm -hmm. that we can do in CLT. I, I've got a list over here myself. These were the things that I just put together myself. And um, I would like to just talk about it for a couple minutes. So uh, the first one was role playing. What do you what do you think about role playing? Well, I, I think it's one of the main definitely. If you if you deal with the CLT, you need to aim at role play. Sometimes it's not possible because role play is sent, the, the role is the thing, and the language could be anything. My students are not ready for that. So what I do is like a step behind that that is acting out. So we do some uh. acting out that is uh, like on the way to role play. It's a little bit more controlled. So we deal with one, two or three models of dialogue and then they act it out. So there's a kind of memory, kind of improvisation, but I bring uh, cue cards or because roll cards are, it's okay, but it's again, a dream come true, not in my class. My students are not ready to speak spontaneously. They don't have the language for that. So they just, they know the basics. Like for example, it's uh, at the clothes store. So they know the name of the clothes, the, how to ask for the size, for the color, the price, and how to pay. And in the card, I say, you want to buy a t-shirt, uh, red for, for brother, and, and the other person has the price, and they act out a dialogue that is as, as far as I can get with them. <laughs> Ah, okay, okay. But uh, are, are you one of those teachers that believes that everything has to happen with uh, language? What about like, just as you said, acting out, you know, like yeah, showing I, stuff? When I was yeah. a teacher, I'm also a Portuguese teacher and my, my ELT teacher, he, he was one of the, the, one of the teachers who made me the, one I, the, way, the way I am right now. He said I, that he was dealing with the, could you give me two tickets for the movies, please? A lot. And then in, when he went to Brazil, all in Portuguese, when he went to Brazil, he saw somebody saying, two, please. Like, what? I told you. <laughs> I, could you give me two tickets? To, so two, please. So two and please are the keywords I said before. They need to know numbers yeah. are a must. Everything happens with yeah. numbers. So teach the numbers yeah, yeah. and teach, for example, uh, respectful expressions like please. Yeah. Please. And let's yeah. do the language. Forget the, could you give me two tickets to the movie? Exactly. 
Exactly. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I wanted to mention because, uh, you know, just being able to communicate, that's, that's the thing. Not knowing like the structures, nothing like that. So uh, what about... Uh, I present the structure. I, I say... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do yeah, the yeah. drilling. And then I underline the minimum. Or are you... Yeah, yeah. I mean, two, please. <laughs> and then... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so what about interviews? Uh, I mean, interviewing my students? Or yeah, or... yeah, but like uh, students interviewing themselves or you interviewing the students. But I, I guess in, in lower levels, that's, that's going to be quite a challenge. Uh, but in, in higher levels, that's, that's going to be more suitable. I, well, again, my students in their immediate future, there is no unlikely they will be interviewed in English. So it's not a, a must now. But I do deal with, I have a, um, a question bank with lots of questions to talk about, like, you know, to break the ice and talk about ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like scavenger hunts. Yeah, like from what's your name yeah. to uh, do you have any brothers? Yeah, or yeah. And uh, okay, I, okay. I have a cue card with, the, like, I give them in the, fi I, we have, I, I have a kind of final exam that is oral. And the first part, I give them a card with five words and they have to ask the other person, this is the information gap activity. So one, I know what I want to ask you, you don't. So for example, my, my, my card says, uh, hometown. So I ask you, where are you from? And you tell me I'm from whatever. And that's kind of interview again, acting out. Mm, not, not free, free. It's not possible. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, maybe also opinion sharing. That's also one of the things I really like. Uh, students can come up with an opinion, maybe in lower levels, they can write it down first and then share it with their like group mates or like cares. And that's, that's also a very good way to practically use English. Uh, so uh, uh, any other comments you want to give us about CLT? Well, uh, something that is super challenging, not just teaching in CLT, but assessing. Assessing communicatively is uh, uh, yeah. a big question mark. Uh, yeah. um, I think that if you teach communicatively, you should also assess communicatively. And uh, again, I use rubrics for this. So when they are acting out, I assess in general, um, fluency, accuracy, completion of the task and something else if necessary, one, two, three criteria and uh, like below standard, standard, outstanding enough. So I don't go crazy because we mm -hmm. have to mm -hmm. make that into numbers. I don't know in your system, but we have from one to 10, a mark. Uh, we have uh, zero to 20. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Condolences. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, uh, but you know, the, the IB system is very nice. You know, in the IB, we actually have a, a scaling from one to eight, but uh, each one of them has a descriptor, you know, so it's quite similar to what we actually do in, uh, in IELTS, for example, that every one of the bands has a descriptor. And then based on, you know, the performance of the students, they, they get a certain score. But, uh, you know, the thing is that uh, the uh, assessment for the IB system is quite different with traditional uh, assessments because, uh, you know, for each one of the bands, uh, you need to have a certain question on the exam. Oh. So uh, the weak students will be able to answer the easier questions that are like memorization questions and stuff like that. And then when we go uh, a level higher, uh, that's going to be a very simple uh, analysis of different, like uh, different, uh, different uh, phenomena based on the taught and the subject that they're doing the exam. And then when they get to the the highest uh, bands, they they need to uh, create. You know, it's it's using their prior knowledge to do an analysis and get to a different type of uh, outcome. So that system is very cool, but uh, you know the ordinary system over here is uh, is like uh, very traditional. They have a, an exam paper; they just have to answer the questions, and most of the time it's like fill in the gaps and multiple choice questions, no essay type questions, to be honest. And um, yeah, that's it. So yeah, I, I'm just gonna turn on the comments again. So if anyone has any questions, uh, but uh, we had a question someone asked uh, and it was directed at you. Uh, 
you, you were talking about the past tense at the beginning of the live, and uh, you said that you don't correct them. And there was a question that don't you correct your students even if the lesson is about the past tense? Oh, my lessons are not about past tense. I speak about past okay. experiences. I okay. use the past to talk about past experiences. And if I ever ask them to produce something, I don't push them. You know, there's a silent period. If you know Krushen, you know that. You need to respect that. Yeah. Because, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, because I tell them that there are regulars, irregulars, whatever, it doesn't mean they are ready to speak or write meaningfully in the language. So it's pushing them too soon. I'm speaking about my students again, super false beginners, the worst ones, because they kind of know something, but they can't do anything with the language. So no, I don't, I don't focus my lessons on grammar. Their grammar, the verb to be is banned. We don't talk about the verb to be in my class. No, who's that? Okay. Okay, that, that, that's, that's pretty nice. You know, that's uh, good for your students because, uh, you know, a lot of the classes, they actually are quite the opposite because uh, they, they just focus on grammar. And that's, that's such a pity. Uh, so, uh, guys, if anyone has any questions, uh, you can type it here because, um, yeah, we're getting to the end of our time. So, any questions? Just I, waiting. I, I, if you want, while I speak, I can tell you. I deal with past as vocabulary. So we learn specific verbs in the past. I don't, I don't make them remember the infinitive, the past, and the third column together. I, the, if you talk about trips, you need like flew, stayed, ate, bought, like, you know, the stuff you do when you go on vacation. And they learn those words like that as vocabulary. I, that's what, when I mm -hmm. said I put everything on vocabulary, that's what I mean. Yeah, so I yeah, yeah. That. What is uh, what, what means, not the present of, not necessary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we have this other comment over here about, uh, so how can we correct them? Uh, well, um, we can talk about correction. We're going to have uh, some live sessions in the coming weeks about uh, error correction because that's, that's one of the most important things in, uh, English language teaching, uh, but uh, basically, you know, error correction should happen in a way that, uh, you know, the rapport doesn't break down, you know, right. so I would say that's, that's the most important thing to have in mind, because a lot, and, uh, you know, based on research, um, you know, the people don't learn from error correction as much as you think they do, in, in so my term, it's, yeah. I only, I don't even correct. I just go back to things that I don't understand. Like if, if the error impedes communication, I don't understand. So I say, can you repeat, please? What do you mean? Exactly. Yeah. Well, when I was teaching in the language school and I was focusing on, I prepare students for um, first certificate in English examination and CAE and proficiency. Well, that's a different thing. And uh, of course I had correction codes and rewriting. If they don't rewrite, it's, it's useless. And in speaking too, sometimes I, I, I write down some things, give them feedback, ask them to do it again. In We have a subject in college that is called uh, orality, reading, writing, and ICT, and they have oral presentation. So we have a rehearsal. We write down a couple of things they need to, the, like the, the, the most urgent to correct. We give them the feedback, they study again, and they have the real presentation, and we check improvement. If necessary, they do okay. it again. But if they don't do it again, errors, you, you can tell them that's wrong. Okay. And they keep saying it wrong. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, uh, you know, the thing is that as much as you tell the students that they are making a mistake, uh, you know, they, 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 again, they can't fix the problem because, uh, you know, uh, something that I really like about uh, error correction is using uh, raising awareness activity. You know, I, I think raising uh, the student's own awareness about something is quite more important than just telling them that this is your mistake, you know, or maybe in the feedback stage of each one of the lessons, you can just provide them with some feedback that, you know, just uh, lights up a torch in their head. Like, I'm, I may have made a mistake in, in this lesson and, you know, just take them into like a thinking, a, a thinking stage by themselves, maybe some, something like that. Uh, 
but uh, changed, uh, two things that changed my mind a lot about error correction. One is that when you talk to natives, I have been blessed to travel a lot, and they make mistakes. They say she don't, she don't. One one American lady once said she don't know nothing. <sighs> <laughs> wrong. She's a native and she said yeah. And yeah. Another, yeah. the second thing that changed my mind was that when, when I, I consider myself a good speaker of, of Spanish my mother tongue I, I, mm -hmm. I believe that my Spanish is pretty good and I have mm -hmm. learned recently because of I don't know, writing research or stuff that I have so many mistakes in my own language <laughs> I, mean, I don't have the right to correct students so if errors don't impede communication Nothing to worry about. Exactly, exactly. So uh, there's, there's another question over here. Are those who are not interested in English kind of distractive in class? Well, discipline is a, it's a problem. It goes beyond being, you know, when you teach, this is something, uh, if, you, if you know Montessori's ideas, you understand that when you yeah. teach in class, you teach to one student. The rest are bored or it's too easy or too difficult for the rest. It's never possible to teach because everybody has a personal style and a, a pace and interest. And discipline is a problem. I was a very good student of English. I, I understood everything and I talked a lot because I talk a lot. And my, my teacher said that I was misbehaving and I was just talking. <laughs> so yeah, to, I know. We need to reconsider discipline in the classroom too. Okay, but, but one of the answers, I guess, would be differentiation. Differentiation helps a lot when it gets to demotivated students in the classroom. Um, maybe just give them another task and maybe they can work on something else completely, you know. Uh, we have a, a great policy for this in our school. Uh, so we have a, a, a department in our school that focuses on uh, teaching students that are not interested in the classroom or are generally... Uh, you know, lower in the level. So uh, they can actually uh, receive a totally different type of, uh, you know, education when it gets to that classroom, that specific classroom, either in the class or out, out of the class. Now, it's, it's going to be very uh, detailed if I want to go into details, but uh, we can actually do that. And there's uh, another question as well, and I think this, this could be our last question because uh, we don't have a lot of time. So do you think uh, correcting errors is the, I, I'm trying to correct the grammar over here. Uh, do you think that uh, correcting errors is the same, uh, is the same with demotivating all the time? I, I think they mean that uh, if you correct uh, students, does it necessarily mean that you're demotivating them? Yeah, if you interrupt production to correct errors, definitely. Nobody wants to talk if they will be corrected, like, not wrong, shut up. But um, it depends on the students. Some students, especially adults, they want to be corrected. They, they like it. They want feedback. And others don't care. So we, we should learn what kind of students we have and provide them with what they need if they want. I, I want to be corrected as a student. I'm, because when I studied other languages, like Italian, German, I wanted to be, I wanted to know if I was saying things right. I, would, I, want, I didn't want to fix mistakes, but other people don't like it. Uh, somebody I talked to on Friday, he said that he quit studying English because he was corrected all the time and he didn't like it. Okay. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah. It's so personal. Yeah, it, it, it's really, it's really personal. It's, uh, but, you know, in, in the Iranian context, I, I could say that a lot of the people like to be corrected. Good. So you know, if, if, you, if you don't correct them, they think that they're, it's, it's no good. You know, the class is no good. Okay, so that, that's why. That, 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 you need to know your students. You, it's them. Yeah. Not us. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Needs analysis again. So you have to know who you're teaching. So, uh, Carla, I can't thank you enough for this opportunity. It was, uh, it was amazing talking to you in person. And I, I hope that everyone has used and learned as much as I have um, from you and all of your experiences. So um, if you just want to say any ending words, I'd be happy to hear them. Uh, maybe uh, I, there are two key words I, I, I like to keep in mind as a teacher to experiment and to reflect. Uh -huh. So you need to oh, yeah. in the classroom and you need to reflect on what you did and share, of course. Yeah.
Yeah, that's 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 quite important. Yeah, just uh, just to reflect on yourself. Yeah, that's that's uh, such an important thing that you know a lot of the people forget to do. Yes, unfortunately, unfortunately. Yeah. we forget the learning to teach too. Make your teaching yeah. your own goal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. To, be, to become a better teacher, and let's not forget that uh, teaching and learning are the same thing. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so thank you for everything, and have a great time. And uh, the live will be saved on my page uh, just after we finish it. Uh, thank you again, and have a great day. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.